Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Just make sure that the volume is up. And yes, it is. Um, yes, so welcome to my channel. Um, if it's the first time you're passing through, um, you know the drill. You put the thumbs up if you like it, the thumbs down if you don't. You comment if you have something to say about what I've said. And you can interact with my subscribers. And yeah, I think that's about it. And of course, you can subscribe if you like. Um, today I wanted to talk about acquisition of British citizenship, which seems straightforward, but it's never straightforward. It's always complex. Each person's um, circumstances are unique. You might get British citizenship, your brother might, your sister might not. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult and it all has to do with times of the year and um, status of your parents and stuff like that. So... I found an interesting article on the Richmond Chambers um, website. They're immigration lawyers. And I their number is 0203-617-9173. I'm not advertising them, but because this, all their information was so um, comprehensive, you know, we have to give them kudos. So many people or so many lawyers, um, you have to pay for advice. You have to pay for this information. And for them to offer um, so much for free, um, when I say free, it's on their website. You can just read it if you want. I think it's fantastic. So for those who don't like reading, I thought I would read for you and share the information that way. So um, I might get interrupted. I might have to pause it, but hopefully I do not. You never know when somebody's going to knock the door, Amazon or someone like that. OK, so British nationality law provides that many people automatically acquire British citizenship by law without having to make any form of application. If you have British citizenship by automatic acquisition, then you have the right to enter and reside in the United Kingdom free from immigration and restrictions. So what are the main eligibility requirements for British citizenship by automatic acquisition? Well, in order to qualify for British citizenship by automatic acquisition, you need to show that you are a British citizen by operation of the law. The most common ways to automatically acquire British citizenship by law are 1. To have been born in the UK on or after the 1st of January 1983 and at the time of your birth either your mother or your father, was a British citizen or settled in the UK. Or two, to have been born outside the UK on or after the 1st of January 1983 and at the time of your birth, either your mother or your father was a British citizenship. Sorry, was a British citizen, otherwise than by descent, that's like me. I got my British citizenship. I was born here, but my parents weren't. So I was able to get my British citizenship, yeah, by descent, because my mum were in the country at the time. They were British subjects or um, Commonwealth citizens, and therefore it, I was eligible. But it does come with restrictions when you acquire your citizenship, like I have done, through my parents who were not born in the country. OK, to have been born before 1 1st of January 1983 and immediately before that date to have been a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies with a right of abode in the United Kingdom. Right of abode means you have the right legally, no immigration restrictions to live in the UK. So what else do I need to know about British citizenship other, other than, sorry, what else do I need to know about British citizenship by automatic acquisition? All automatic acquisition means is you get citizenship automatically. So, for example, you're born in the UK, your mum's born in the UK, just very, 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 very um, blanket. You're born in the UK, your parents are born in the UK, you're an automatic British citizen. So... And outside that, there's a lot of different laws and things that 
might not make you automatically a British citizen. So automatic acquisition, that's all it means, how you acquire your citizenship. So um, British nationality law can be complex. Your precise circumstances are unique. Um, this means, for example, that you may have a claim to British citizenship by automatic acquisition, even if one or more of your siblings has not. And you might say, how does that happen? Like I said, they have time periods before 1983, after 1981, after 2010. A lot of different dates that will determine who is eligible for British citizenship or automatic British citizenship. OK, you will need to show, in order to get automatic citizenship, you need to show that you were born in the UK on or after the 1st of January 1983 and your mother or your father was settled in the UK at the time of your birth. Settled in the UK means they were legally entitled to be here, indefinite leave to remain or limitedly to remain, but they're legally in the country. Or you were adopted in the UK as a child on or after the 1st of January 1983, and one of your adopters was a British citizen at the time of your adoption, or you were found abandoned as a newborn infant in the UK on or after the 1st of January 1983. I never knew that. So how do we know that people don't just come over here, abandon their kids, and then they get British citizenship? Hmm, it's a new one on me. OK, born in the UK on or after the 30th of January 2010, and your mother or father was a member of the armed forces, or born outside the UK on or after the 1st of January 1983, and your mother or your father was a British citizen, otherwise than by descent at the time of your birth, like I said. British citizen by descent means they, your their parents weren't born in the UK. Um, born outside the UK on or after the 1st of January 1983, and at the time of your birth, your mother or father was a British citizen serving outside the UK in qualifying service, having been recruited for that service in the UK. Or adopted outside the UK as a child under the convention adoption on or after the 1st of January 1983 and one of your adopters was a British citizen at the time of your adoption and the adopters were habitually resident in the UK at the time of your adoption. Now one minute they're saying you know they use different terms habitually resident, ordinarily resident, settled in the UK they're very, very similar. It just means they're legally entitled to be in the UK. There might be some restrictions, but they are legally entitled to be in the UK. Um, born or born in the UK before 1983, like moi. Or adopted in the UK before the 1st of January 1983, or naturalised as a citizen of the UK and colonies in the UK before the 1st of January 1983, or registered as a citizen of the UK and colonies in the UK before the 1st of January 1983, or a citizen of the UK and colonies immediately before the 1st of January 1983, and were born to or adopted by a parent who had, the, who had at the time of your birth or adoption, was a citizen of the UK and colonies by birth, adoption, naturalisation or registration in the UK, or a citizen of the UK and colonies immediately before the 1st of January 1983, and at any time before then had been settled in the UK and at the time had been ordinarily resident in the UK for five years while a citizen of the UK and colonies or a Commonwealth citizen immediately before the 1st of January 1983 and at the time of your birth or adoption, your mother or father or adoptive parent was a citizen of the UK and colonies by birth 
in the UK. So, a lot of it has to do with being born in the UK. Parents, grandparents, that's a simple way of putting, looking at it. But like I said, there are, it is contingent on other factors. <clears throat> the term father has a specific definition in British nationality law, and this definition has varied over time. It is therefore essential to confirm your precise circumstances as the person you consider to be your father may or may not be recognised by your father for the purposes of British nationality law. Now, I don't know if um, in order to qualify to be your father, it has to be um, biological, an adopted father. Um, I'm not quite sure how stepfathers fit into this category, but I'm sure if, you're, if you go to these immigration law lawyers, they'll, they'll let you know. So British citizenship by descent is also defined in British nationality law. If you were born outside the UK, it is essential to confirm the basis on which your parents had acquired British citizenship. So once again, it's a very, it's very discreet. I don't even know if it's discreet, but you're born outside. You've got parents in the UK and, and they're, they're citizens. As far as you're concerned, you, your parents are British citizens. But for the purposes of British nationality law, if they're not, if their parents are not born in the UK, your, your parent will be British by descent and they don't have the same privileges or rights. So when you are, when you're born outside the UK, if your parent, if your parents, um, parents, weren't born in the UK, you can't get automatic citizenship. So it's no point saying, oh, well, my parent is a citizen, therefore I'm entitled to citizenship. No, you're not. You're not. So in relation to the above, the UK includes the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man and from Pacific dates, certain qualifying territories. So what is British citizenship by automatic acquisition? Well, many people acquire British citizenship without having to make any sort of formal application. This is known as British citizenship by automatic acquisition. So providing you don't have to apply for ILR, indefinite leave to remain, limited leave to remain, um, registration to be a citizen, you're automatically a British citizen. If you, have ha if you have British citizenship, then you can enter and reside in the United Kingdom free from immigration restrictions. If, you are, if you're applying for a British passport, you will need to prove that you qualify for British citizenship. Who qualifies for British citizenship by acquisition? Well, Section 1, in brackets 1 of the British Nationality Act, 1981, sets out when a person will qualify for British citizenship by acquisition. A person born in the UK between 1st of January 1983 and the 30th of June 2006, inclusive, is a British citizen if, at the time of their birth, one of the following applies. So everything is contingent on something else. It's never just a blanket, you know, between 1983 2006, you're okay. No, it's always contingent on something. What this is contingent is their parents are married and either parent is a British citizen. And... Not all, and um, their parents are married and either parent is settled in the UK. Their parents are unmarried and their mother is a British citizen. Their parents are unmarried and their mother is settled in the UK. So please note you may not, you may still be able to register as British if you were born before 2006. Your parents are unmarried and your father is British or settled. A person born in the UK on or after the 1st of July 2006 is a British citizen if, at the time of their birth, one of the following applies. Either parent is a British citizen, either parent is settled in the UK, either parent is a member of the armed forces, and the person was born on or after the 13th of January 2010, because 
by that time, after 2006, I think they had all the paperwork and everything in place to make sure whoever was settled or citizens in the UK were meant to be. And that's what they're still trying to do. Um, if a child born is born after 2010, they will be eligible for British citizenship if their parents are married and either parent is a member of the armed forces and the person was born on or after the 13th of January 2010. Their mother is a member of the armed forces and the person was born on or after the 13th of January 2010. Under the British Nationality Act 1981, Immigration Rules Appendix EU Amendment Regulations 2021, a person born in the UK from the 1st of July 2021 onward, who is otherwise not a British citizen, will become one automatically where their parent is successful in being granted indefinite leave to remain under the EUSS after the child's birth and... The application was submitted by the 30th of June 2021 by a parent who did not hold permanent residence but had not been resolved at the point of when the child was born. So that's the EU um, settlement scheme. Um, the application is submitted after the 30th of June 2021 and is resolved favourably after the child's birth and the parent can demonstrate both reasonable grounds for a late application and that they could have met the requirements for EUSSILR, that is once again EU Settlement Scheme and indefinitely to remain on the 30th of June 2021, had an application been submitted. In these instances, the child will become British automatically from the date on which the parent is granted ILR, indefinite leave to remain, under the EUSS, EU Settlement Scheme. There will be no need for separate application or a fee. Usually, when a parent becomes settled after a child's birth, a separate application is required. So what if I'm born outside the UK? Well, you'll remember that woman who was, um, that Jamaican woman who was a British resident and she went to Jamaica and had her baby out there and they prevented her from bringing the child into the country because she wasn't British. And um, her mother is British by descent and that is a typical example where when you're British by descent, your child that you have outside the country is not automatically British and cannot automatically acquire British citizenship. So um, it's still being looked at. I, I heard that um, they've got through or something, and but I'm not sure. I haven't seen any follow-up, but apparently um, the child is in the country. I don't know what type of visa, I don't know in what kind of circumstances, but they have allowed it, I believe, or so somebody said. Um, in one of my comments. So um, under section 2 in brackets 1a of the British Nationality Act 1981, a person born outside the UK on or after the 1st of January 1983 is a British citizen at birth if at the time of birth either parent is a British citizen other than, otherwise than by descent. This will normally be the case if the parent obtained British citizenship through birth in the UK or naturalisation. And the thing is, this British citizenship, otherwise than by descent, it is really making sure that the parents are not white. Because to, to, um, by grandparents and grandparents being born in the UK, very unlikely that you are going to be white. So that is why um, it's British by descent, because otherwise than by descent, because you don't really have rights as a proper white British citizen. You don't have the same rights as a black British citizen as you would have if you were a white citizen. And these, the white citizens are the ones who are not, um, they won't have that problem of being um, British by descent. They can go off and have kids all over the world, but their kids will always be British because very, very likely that they're British, their grandparents are British, their parents are British, their great-grandparents are British, which makes them white British. 
So who is responsible for proving that an applicant has a claim to citizenship? If you do not already have your British citizenship recognised and seek to establish a claim, then the burden of proving that you have automatically acquired British citizenship is on you. Any person seeking to prove that they have automatically acquired British citizenship must find and provide the necessary documentation themselves. How would I show that I am a British citizen by acquisition? Usually people use their passports and or birth certificates for this purpose. The same applies to their parents' passports and birth certificates. Other examples include certificates of naturalisation or evidence of indefinite leave to remain in the form of a passport stamp or BRP biometric resident permit. <clears throat> the evidence required for each application will be fact specific as it will depend on your exact circumstances in which you acquired British citizenship. See, you can get British citizenship, but how did you acquire it? Were you naturalised? Did you have to apply for it? Makes a difference. Then if you get it by the fact that you're born here, your parents are born here, it makes a big difference. So children subject to parental orders. Um, for the 6th of April 2010, a child who is subject of a parental order made in a UK court following a surrogacy arrangement becomes a British citizen from the date of the order. If either of the persons making the order is a British citizen, if either of the persons making the order is a British citizen, the provision for this can be found in one brackets five of the British Nationality Act 1981. British citizenship acquired this way is not lost if the parental order ceases unless the order is set aside by a higher court on appeal, in which case the child would no longer be a British citizen. Like I said, um, Richmond Chambers are the immigration barristers. And I'm not advocating for them. Like I said, you always go to the Law Society, website um, and you get the registered OISC, the names. I mean, Richmond Chambers could well be on there. I'm sure they probably are. But that's how you, um, Law Society, I think Home Office, have a list of um, qualified and registered immigration lawyers and so do the Citizens Advice Bureau. So, but like I said, their number is 0203 617 And that's all for now. Hope you found it useful. Bye-bye.